Good morning, Ecos fam. So do? glad to have you here this morning yes, again. Yes, this Sunday, every Sunday we are having That's you right. here. And as we continue in our Again series, mm. today we're going to have a table discussion. Called Not, Not again. again. And we're going to show y'all how we can probably have different views of certain things and yes. still get along, still and respect still each other. God. And still love each other. Yeah. And be friends. And that's all that It's matters. okay to have disagreements. Yes. It's as healthy. long as you can work through them in an adult, mature That's right. Way. Listen, Absolutely. we're heading into our discussion right now, but first we head into worship. We'll see you guys soon.
church here because right now, if God does anything good in your life, now's the time to move your body like you already received the healing. Open your mouth like you've already received the financial breakthrough. We're going to praise our way through this mountain. Come on, you say, listen. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the, come on, we sing. When I move my body, when I hey. move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. When I move my body, when hey. I move hey. my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness when I move, when I move my body. When I move my feet, when I hold my mouth, then the darkness sleeps. When I move my body, when I move my feet, when I hold my mouth. Happy Sunday from me and my Simba boy. Just wanted to say good morning and I pray that the Holy Spirit has been moving in your homes, in your minds, and in your hearts this morning. So before we get into the word, um, it is time for our tithes and our offerings this morning. And I want to share the scripture um, in Proverbs chapter 3 verse um, 9. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best of everything you produce. So this morning as we prepare our hearts, to not only be obedient and also to go a little bit above and beyond than what we usually usually do. Um, it's time to give our best to the Lord, which is in our tithings and our offerings. And so I just wanna encourage you guys this morning, do what the Lord places in your heart to do, be obedient, 
at the same time have faith and trust that the Lord is faithful to his promises of taking care of his children, which is us. So with that said, I want to pray with you guys. And there's four ways to give on the screen. And I pray that you guys, you know, go ahead and choose the which one's easier for you guys and more simple for you guys to just do it as fast as you can. Um, so I just want to encourage you guys. So let's just go ahead and pray for our tithes and our offerings this morning. Father God, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you, God, that we get to we get to give to you another day, Father. We get to give to you out of obedience, and we get to give to you, Father, to see even your faithfulness in our lives, God, in such a bigger way than ourselves. We thank you, God, that you will bless every single person that's giving this morning. I pray for their families. I pray for their marriages. And I pray, God, for the move of your spirit in their homes, Father, and that you will provide the things that they need, Father. Thank you for your mercy, your love, and faithfulness. And I declare every seed so today blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day, guys. Just what to do And I will love you, Lord 
What's up? Hey. Hello, hello. It is Sunday morning. Do not adjust your television screen or phone or laptop. Mm -mm. It is Sunday morning and we are having a talk. Yep. During service. What kind of talk? We are going to have a family talk. Okay. A family talk about race. Okay. And racism Mm -hmm. in America, in the world, in the church. Uh, I really felt the responsibility for us to have a conversation um, because I think that there's no way that the church can equitably say that for the last quarter of 2020, we talked about political platforms on our Sunday services, in our Sunday services, Mm -hmm. on our social media pages. Uh, and somehow when it comes to people dying in the streets, we feel like that's a side item. Yeah. Uh, and that that's a distraction from the gospel. Yeah. I feel like certainly if we spent the last quarter of 2020 talking about wh- whatever political candidate it is, um, that we definitely um, could not back down from having a conversation that I actually do feel like um, matters to God in a significant way. Not yeah. that your <clears throat> political candidates did did not, uh, but I think that this is equally as important and possibly more important because candidates are gone in four years. Yeah. Um, but I think that we have the opportunity to speak to some values and principles um, and have an understanding. So just so you know, like we're, we are, this is not scripted. Um, They probably wish it was scripted, (laughs) particularly Amber. Um, But I think that um, it's important that we, like, in all honesty, as a family, you know, when we were talking about, I was asking them, would they be a part of the conversation? Um, And Amber was like, I am... I'm yeah. I'm down. Losing our private I know. Party. I won't say it all, but you want it to be honoring to the moment. Totally. And just not like, you know, out here. You wanted to to find the space to like. I want to learn. I want to grow. I don't want to say a whole lot as if I'm an authority. But I feel that um, there's no perfect conversation like this. Yeah. And I think that part of the reason why a lot of people aren't having this conversation. Not on platforms, like people will do this on a talk show kind of a deal because it's fun and it's cool and it can be edited. <laughs> but um, but a lot of people are not having conversations around their tables with people that they say they're friends with. But you've been finding out on your social media feeds that they hold very different views from yeah. you. And it doesn't mean that their different views makes them a racist, yeah. but there's a gap between your understanding and their understanding. Yeah. Yeah. And I think if we talked, um, they can still hold their views, but I think there would be more understanding mm-hmm. for people that held different views. Yeah. And there may be a less um, uh, likelihood of us tossing the word racism around and calling people racist yeah. who may not be racist. Yeah. Um, they may have different perspectives. And then when we really identify racism, we're we're more far more potent in addressing it yeah. and, um, and digging in it. So I just asked them what we have in common here at this table is love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we love each other. We've committed to be on a journey with each other. We've rocked with each other through good times, bad times, ups and downs. I was, I had no place to live and Shane mm-hmm. opened his house for me and my wife to, he just had to have a, you know, it's, condo just sitting there and was like, you know, so, just come on. <laughs> just got an extra, 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 extra house for you. Go on and and take your you family there. In fact, we just walked out four years and never walked back in. And I'll go see what's like, you know. <laughs> but but he, but he, <laughs> but, I mean, I kind of. Um, but, um, but yeah, so family, friends, um, obviously you guys know Amber Josiah. And so we wanted to have a conversation that was not perfect and tied with a bow. Yeah. Where there would be some fumbling and bumbling, difference of opinions. Difference of yeah, that's opinions. the other thing we have in common is that we probably don't agree on yeah. <laughs> some stuff. <laughs> right. So yeah. we can get through it. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. And, and uh, I feel like it's really valuable um, like just t- to determine, I think, those things at the top. And yeah. sometimes like the, the conversation that goes out is like this very unified 
conversation. Yeah. It sounds all put together. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes that actually makes it difficult to have uh, a conversation with other people because yeah. you feel like you've got to present some like put together thing. Yeah. And or it I reinforces think, that you need to be having conversations with people who have the same yeah. Opinion, opinion yeah. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think what this kind of thing does is it it gives permission to say, I don't have it figured out. Here's what I'm thinking. And I'm actually cool if you tell me like I don't agree with you because we can work we can work that out. Yeah. That's what that's what love yeah. does is it it's it bridges the gap yeah. in, in the places where um there needs to be a bridge. Yeah. 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 We got, I, go ahead. I think it's significant <clears throat> that this isn't the first conversation about this that we've had. Yeah. 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 It's, we're not just talking about this for for viewers yeah. right? like we're talking about this for our lives and for our own understanding mm -hmm. and for our families and yeah. our future yeah. like it matters not just for this moment but yeah. in, mm -hmm. in general in our I think that um, we're going to jump into some questions and then tell about some stories that you know maybe you guys have had and experienced racism um, and Amber I know you get it all the time <laughs> <laughs> Probably Stone funny. number one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry for what I said. <laughs> Listen. Okay. So, um, I think that the pro I think that racism does exist in our world. Yeah. Maybe we should start with the definition. Um, we can do textbook. Why don't you pull up textbook definition? There we go. Prejudice. Mary. Prejudice, discrimination, or uh, antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's just the groundwork of our working definition for racism. I'm better than I, you. Yes, I'm better than you because particularly my race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're inferior to me particularly, particularly because, yeah. Yeah. you know, um, because of your race. I think that racism has to be dealt on multiple levels. It's not going to be fixed in this conversation, obviously. Um, but I think that it's, there's, it, it needs to be addressed in systems where it does exist. Yeah. I think it needs to be addressed in communities where it does exist. I think it needs to be addressed in context as well, around the table. There are policies. Dr. King used to say you can't legislate morality. And so although he fought a good fight for there to be legal changes. Mm -hmm. He was very clear that there needs to be a conviction at the soul of the nation. Yeah. And I think that's in lockstep with believers, right? Yeah. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to fight against abortion if I don't have a conviction at, a, at the core level yeah. that it's wrong to kill babies, yeah. even though the conversation around it is nuanced. I have a core conviction that will guide me forward in that. And I think the same thing we're trying to, to, to kind of, uh, identifies is do we agree that racism exists and that it's wrong mm -hmm. you know i think that's a very simple and fundamental kind of starting point so that's the question first question for you all is do you think racism exists and is it wrong yes yes um <laughs> yes that's, that's a simple answer obviously but i don't think it's as um, pronounced as what your social media feed or your um, the social conversation would have it be. I don't think it's I think it's that real, but I don't think it's as overt as that. Mm. Um, I think that it's a it's lack of exposure. Um, mm. I grew up on a reservation. We all think the same. We all look the same. We all, um, our point of view is all the same. So there's a lot of things that may be said in that community that could come off in a separate community as racist or that would fit that definition. Mm -hmm. And the same thing in a lot of communities. Mm -hmm. You go to a predominantly anything community, something could come out of that mm -hmm. Um sounding that way mm -hmm. so that's why I, I don't think it's as over i think it's a matter of a uh, lack of exposure mm. um didn't, and just speaking real plain um i didn't really know any uh just speaking i didn't know any black people really until i moved out to marietta and then really didn't talk to talk to anyone Ooh, actually if, you first, if your first interaction with black folks was in marietta <laughs> <laughs> no 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 oh. then uh, it was like, saturated no, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we didn't really talk to anybody, the, the black families or anything, and definitely didn't have anybody at the table. You guys were actually the first for me. Huh. 
You're hey. I, and I didn't meet anybody. She's more black than me. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I didn't meet anybody till I was 14 years old. It was the first time I met a black person. I'm from where, I'm from the reservation. Wow. And so it was all it was all new, right? Wow. And and just speaking real plain, by the definition, I was very racist for a time in my life. Very and what did like, that look like? How, like how it, just because you felt like you were better than white people or black people or anybody uh, else? Anybody that wasn't Native. from where I'm from. Mm-hmm. And that's just, you know, um, and that was out of ignorance, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but yeah, so that's that's what that was. But as I began to be more exposed, sitting down with people having meals, doing a hey, that doesn't line up with what has been said. Mm-hmm. Right, and I think um, I think that's a big part of the conversation is exposure. Mm-hmm. Having the conversation, it's not going to sound the same in a year as long as we keep talking about it. Yeah. What do you think that? Oh, do you think that you <laughs> appreciate it? Um, you felt like you were better than them because of your race, or just because the way that you did things was better? I thought it was. I think it was a prideful thing. Just. Uh, I'm native. You're not. Anything that's not us is. So, did you think you were better than every race because you're native? Or yeah, superior and it wasn't any like identifiers, oh. like because of X, Y, or Z. It was you're not, and I am. Yeah. So that yeah, is. Yeah. Just pride. yeah. Yeah. It was and just pride. How is that? Like, how would that differ from like cultural pride? Um, I think it was because we're. Just being a jerk. <laughs> you, know? you know what though? Um, like in no the like it's the same thing in the Latino community. Like uh they're like it's it really easy to talk about like white people in, in the Latino community. Like they they're lazy or whatever, right? It's real there's like a pro- is there's that, like is a, that a common one. It, it is. <laughs> like they don't want to work hard, you know? Um it, but it's not true. No. <laughs> uh, but but I think but I think there's like a cultural pride there, those which is like uh which is like, uh, can it doesn't come, it doesn't seem as arrogant, it seems, but there's like a prideful thing in there. So let me, let me ask, ask this. What's, what's yeah. different? What yeah. makes it racism versus cultural pride? I think it's a, a pride of the majority. Gotcha. We live in America. What is the majority yeah. now? It ain't White us. People. Yeah. White people, right? Mm-hmm. And so listen, everyone Diego, else Hispanics. feels marginalized. <laughs> everyone <laughs> feels marginalized, under, underrepresented. Mm-hmm. Why? Because that's a fact. You are underrepresented. Yeah, right. Native Americans are, are only 5 million people in a country of 300 and whatever, 20-something million it is in this country. We're only 5 million across the whole country. Wow. Okay? So, of course, we feel underrepresented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Deb Holland mm-hmm. just got, um, you know, nominated for a Secretary uh, of the Interior and got, got confirmed. And that's like the biggest win in so mm-hmm. long. And everyone's just prideful about it, and, and rightfully so, really happy. But, it, you know, and, and I don't know anything about this woman. Is she the best woman for the job? Or was I just happy for her because she's Native? Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, just wholesale stamp of approval because yeah. she's Native. Yeah. She could be the worst human in the world. I'm not saying she is, yeah. mm-hmm. but she could be. Yeah. But I was prideful in, like, yes, vote her in. It would be so cool for us. Yeah, it, mm-hmm. would, yeah, yeah. it was just to see representation, Yeah, mm-hmm. to, to have exposure to, you know, the same, you know, when, when the Obamas got into office, mm-hmm. young black kids saw, yeah. I can get into the highest office of the yeah. land. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, this is, this is the New Americans post yeah. on that, right? Mm-hmm. It's a very high office. It's, you know... Yeah. So what's the relevance of that with the black community? President Obama? Uh, no, just this, that kind of that idea, the like cultural representation, pride. Oh, like yeah. the cultural pride. Yeah. I think that there's, I, I don't remember being in a space with African Americans where we felt superior, um, even among ourselves. I don't ever remember there being conversations where we were like, except for cooking, like mm-hmm. now nah, we, my friend says that mm. black people are superior on land. Um, Sports, singing, <laughs> every talent, every ability. Your racist friend says what? Swimming. No, I'm just except kidding. For swimming. <laughs> Get him in water or up in the air. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally, I'm totally saying. Uh, don't you email me? No, no. but I think that um, yeah. You know, sports. Uh, there are areas where we feel like there we we we've excelled, um, notably. But I don't ever remember being in a conversation in community where there was like a, a sense of like, a, like superiority. Now I do remember growing up in a school and a community 
where um, black pride was intelligently invested. Like I didn't know at the time, I just thought it was natural, but I grew up, <laughs> we would sing the, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, National. yeah, the Star Spangled Banner and the Black National Anthem. Yeah. Every, every, I didn't, it wasn't until I got, sing it for us. lift every voice and <laughs> sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty, let our rejoicings rise, high as the listening skies, let it be loud as a thing. rolling sea, You've never sing a song, okay, sorry, <laughs> you're talking over the anthem, you have to be quiet, at least you. Like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She was raised in Highland Park. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Yeah. So, but yeah. So the, it was it was a distinct. It was an intentional investment. Black History Month was like we all year long. We we didn't learn about just we loved Dr. King and Rosa Parks, but we learned about black scientists and intellectual people, uh, you know, Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois. We, you know, we learned about thinkers and shapers of culture and community. So there was intentional. Every, every, every school morning, we would have to sh shout out Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, Princeton, um, University of Pennsylvania, um, like just on and on and on, listing Ivy League schools and you to go to that we were going to go. Well, they didn't care if we were going there or not, but like they were like, you're going to know these top ones because you're going to at least know you know them. You know, so every day that was drilled in us because they wanted us to know college is what you like. This education is, is key. So that kind of cultural, I, I can understand when you're like, is there a difference there? Yeah, it was an investment like I am somebody, um, but it felt like I am somebody that was combating a world that might be saying otherwise. It was like, it was like if someone came up to you and said, you know, you're cute, you, you really are. You, you, you know, you, you, it's almost like you're like, well, did you hear otherwise? Cause you, you're trying, it's like you're trying to convince me. So it's kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> I am somebody. Yeah, don't worry, you, yeah. So I kind of was like, am I not? I, I get that in here, but out there, am I not? You know, so, but there was, there was a lot of pride, but not, I didn't sense a, a sense of superiority. And I think that might be a difference even. Yeah. As I was hearing you there, I was like, oh, mm, that could be kind of a. Do you, do you think that racism exists in the church in America? Claude, have mercy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Why? When you ask a question that you know the answer to. <laughs> yeah. A setup. Know, Here yeah. we go. Yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I will, I will say. Let's go to church. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Because racists go to church and they need the church. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh. Come on, pastors. Hey. Come on, gospel. Uh, hey. Yes, I, I believe racism exists in the church. Um, and I have predominantly worked in white churches, very white churches, yeah. for the last 20 years. Okay. Or, or white communities. You worked communities. in a white church. Mm -hmm. Why? Um, because or they how? had they had the budget to hire me. Honestly, <laughs> initially, I was in I was in college. Uh, I just facts. I was in college, and the first church that church that hired me was Carbondale Assembly of God. I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So <laughs> I was I was going to Orops University, and I was hired by Carbondale Assembly of God to help their worship pastor. So I was an assistant to him, um, Pastor Jeff Taylor. Um, he wouldn't let me call him Pastor Jeff Taylor. He called, he was the first person that I knew in clergy that didn't want to be called like Pastor. He's like, just call me Jeff. That was a cultural change in and of itself. But so, yeah. So I started calling him Coach. Anyway, that was the first place. Lovely, lovely experience. And but all the places that I've worked have been very white. And I'm aware that I was brought in because they wanted diversity. And in fact, in this first context at Carbondale, we had that conversation. It's like, you know, we want to diversify and we want to show that we're serious about taking this step and we want you on staff, not just in the congregation. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but I think, and I thought that was great at the time for sure, because that's all I could handle. Mm -hmm. But I think as you grow older, it's not just enough to be on staff. You need a seat at the table. There's a lot of churches yeah. that got black folks on the staff, but they're like not. Leveraging, uh, yeah. leveraging it for optics. Yeah, leveraging for, uh, for optics. Um, you know, you don't. Just be, I, I always say, I don't mind being used. I don't want to be misused. So I think those conversations have to be had. And yes, I have experienced racism in churches. I can tell you one particular encounter that I had. Um, I was working at a church, um, great church, awesome church. But the church just had a, um, had a, had a, a school attached to it. Um, and so um, the school was doing great. We wanted the school to do great. 
Um, but with the school's increase and activities, the church got less and less priority. Um, it wasn't like the world, the end of the world. We were seeing God bless the organization through the school flourishing. Um, however, at some point you got to draw the line and say, okay, Sunday service might be a little bit important and you might need a rehearsal for a quality team unless you're just going to pay everybody to come in. But we were having rehearsal in, um, you know, trailers, making it work. It's what it is. I'm a church kid. You know what it's like. We all know what it's like to just make it work. So I'm in the organization. I'm an executive. Um, another person that works on the school side of things is an executive. Um, I have authority to be in a space because this is that we don't have rehearsals midweek because we're giving space to for the school to thrive so i have the i have the authority been authorized to be in the space a trailer which is shared space by a teacher as well a music teacher so it works as an upright piano and i'm talking a literal trailer so we so i get my team there sunday mornings and that's where we have no one can believe this is the reality of what like they're like we see this huge big church and like, oh, you know, but it is what it is, right? So we're there, we're having a good time, this is life. Well, one Sunday I get there and there's a padlock on the trailer. And um, I'm like, what is happening to this Sunday morning? <laughs> and so fast forwarding through a lot, point is, is that one of the white executives who was, um, equal to me, but on a different side of the org chart, told a custodian to padlock the door so that we would not have access to it. Um, that per nothing in our system or in that person was triggered to say, I should call this person who's equal to this person to see if that's a good idea because we are here to serve the same cause. If I would have told that person to lock the assembly room, football field, basketball court, or a classroom, they for sure would have contacted this person and been like, uh, so he just, I just wanna make sure, right? Um, and then the pastor just says, well, you know, it's, it's just don't make anything about, you know, it's, it's, I'm sure he just, whatever, and just kind of move on. So, honestly, I don't know if the pastor knew really how to deal with it or how to address it. I, 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 and I don't know that the man was racist, but I know there was something mm -hmm. that told, beyond just the person that told him to padlock it, this person in the middle here tells me a lot about your organization. What in our organization made this man feel comfortable yeah. with locking another senior level of official out of their space, knowing they would be fully endorsed back and authorized in that decision. Yeah. That says to me, something is not level. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't really know what it is, but I, th but I think that um, there's lack of value in certain places. So I think there's some of that. Um, so I don't want to say it's just racism, but I think race, that, that mixed with lack of value in certain things can begin to um, make a black person think, is there something here? You know what I mean? Because why? Yeah. Like, like why? Again, I could understand his why. He, he, he felt like the space wasn't being taken care of, all, take care of all of that. Like j the man had a justifiable reason to say, I want to protect this space, right? But the fact that the person in the middle felt so secure to make a move like that on another senior level position with no discussion says something to me that's not being addressed. Now the organization will tell you they're not racist. I don't think they are. They support every cause. They got X's on their hands. They're marching with black folks. They got black folks on stage, all that. Women's rights, whole nine, everything. Um, probably some LGBTQ, all of that. Like legit, they are, and honestly, I believe they are truly trying to show the love of Christ. But I think that they, I don't know that they've really had real conversations about that. And so, yes, I have, and that's just one example that I've experienced at more than one location. When you show up at a venue, you've been, as a worship leader, asked to come in and lead, and the whole staff that's there is white, and they're looking at you like, can we, can we help you? Like, <laughs> this is like, um, and then 
one of the white team members come in that they also don't really know because they're trying to put a hodgepodge of team together. And it's like, oh, yeah, what do you need? Uh, you know, those types of deals, you just don't. And then I have to lead everybody in worship. And, you know, like you you see that over and over and over and over again. Um, insinuations like you don't have quality ears. Insinuations like... Um, you know, your, your gear would be less, would be, would be inferior. Like just, I've seen other musicians or that you don't read music or that you don't have intonation, like just stuff that you, you don't know why, but you see people who are, if you be honest, inferior in giftedness, mm -hmm. not in their worship to the Lord, hear what I'm saying, but they just don't bring as much to the table in giftedness as some of their other black counterparts and they're not held in any question or suspect or nearly to the de degree. So that's kind of tough. And the trick is, is that if you bring it up, you don't want to be marked as that guy. Yeah. The angry black person who has a chip on their shoulder yeah. because life has been hard and blah, 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 blah. The world's against them. They don't want to work hard. They really like all of those things. Yeah. So for years, you just kind of like, oh, it's nothing. Hmm. Oh, it's nothing. Hmm. Uh, I mean, I've had literal congreg congregants come to me and say, I just love you people. Thanks. <laughs> like multiple. Multiple, like, and I'm just like, thank you, and I get it, you know, like that's they're just the be they're showing love. <laughs> that's their best. It's the best that they have to give, you know. But but yes, you you see it, you experience it over and over and over again, and it's not just that you feel capped to win, yeah. but you don't feel safe to fail. Mm -hmm. That's a privilege that white people get in a lot of church contexts that black folks do not get. Yeah, yeah. and that's. And in, in, in a lot of different contexts, for sure, you know. So, um, so yeah, I do. I do think that it that it happens, but I do. I don't think the answer to it is to retreat. Gotcha. I think that a part of the steps we have to take is leaning in, yeah. having more conversations, and and really walking with communities who truly want to be in those in those kind of. It has you know. to be a want. Yeah, it does have to be a want. Yeah. You can, you, we have to shift from being an advocate to really being. Um, in covenant yeah. and there's a lot of black people a lot of white people who celebrate and really feel like they're doing their jam by being an advocate mm -hmm. and I appreciate you being an advocate like post do all the posts post yeah. all the posts I'm sure that Adam Toledo's family is glad about it I'm sure that um, Dante Rice family is glad about it but there comes a point but you advocate for dogs True. Yeah. We advocate for wild animals. We advocate yeah. for the cotton. We advocate for you know <laughs> the ozone layer. Yeah. You, but covenant is different. Yeah, covenant is different. I think that when we see the covenant value of each other, then I don't have you here because you're good for me and good yeah. for business. Yeah, like, good for optics. Yeah, good, good for, for optics. It. Like I have, we're we're on this journey because our lives together are enriched. They're so yeah. much better. Yeah, you know, I think that's the value. Have you? Do you feel like you've ever experienced racism? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> She's like, it's from Brandy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, and why I would have... you even struggle that if that to answer that question? I see the pause and the delay. Why? I mean, I guess like I, I, I pause always to say never, but just because, you know, who knows? Like, um, but not that I've been aware of it happening. I'm sure stereotypes, you know, I've experienced, um, but I've experienced white privilege a lot. What does um, that look like? What does that look like? Um, you know, it's kind of funny because I, I just recently started hearing people contest that white privilege exists, and it was surprising to me that um, that anyone would would be blind to it. But um, like, just one example for me is that. I mean, I've been pulled over probably 25 times in my life, and I've never had a ticket, ever. Wow. And I'm a terrible driver, just so I will tell you. <laughs> okay, one time she got pulled over. I was behind her. Two cops came out, and then she was going too fast. So I pulled out, like, way behind her, pulled back, right, in my little beater car. And then next thing you know, the cops start kicking her tires. And I'm like, what happened? You know, and they're like, 
Yeah, they pulled me over and then they told me, hey, your tires are bald. You need to get those fixed. <laughs> like, and let me go. That literally has never happened to me. Wow. When's the last time the, tire, the, <laughs> <laughs> the police kicked your tires and said that? Shane's yeah. kicked our <laughs> <laughs> Shane's giving us money for tires. I haven't even <laughs> kicked her tires and told her to get those tires replaced. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, I, I think um, I, at the time, like over and over, I wouldn't have seen it as that necessarily. But looking back on it you know I've been driving for a, a lot of years and it's kind of crazy that in all the reckless driving and all the times I've been pulled over I've never had a ticket and I can't imagine that there's a black person that has that same story have you ever been nervous being have you ever been nervous being pulled over to get a ticket but not my safety threatened no I probably would now, like if it was at night and I was by myself or something, because I feel like my trust is shaken a little bit just in, in general. But um, but no, I mean, I've never I've never. And actually, we had a conversation like about this one time, like, what's it like to feel that way? Yeah. And uh, I can only imagine. But you know, I love that. And I just say a point here. We, was this when we were in Portland? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were in Portland before and, the world blew yeah. up. With, with it was the week. Racism. It was three days before the oh the world God. blew up with COVID. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to be in Spain. We were trying to salvage. We were going to Spain and we tried to salvage a trip, so we went to to Portland. And in Portland, because <laughs> they're the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Portland. Love you, Portland. <laughs> Ecos everywhere. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but but we had a good conversation, and I so appreciated that you were just. I could tell. Because if you don't know, like Amber is a pro of pro. She's a consummate professional. She's very refined. She doesn't walk into a space unprepared. She's intelligent and funny and just a great human being and just well, um, just settled in her skin. But I could tell when we were in Portland and we were talking about this, there was, there was an uneasiness that was healthy because it was carried by vulnerability. And she just wanted to have honest conversation about like, mm -hmm. can we talk? Mm -hmm. and, and I would say to you, like black folks, Latino folks, native folks, there are probably white people around you that you really love and they really love you, but they don't, may not know how to yeah. even approach the conversation. Yeah. They don't want to be offensive. Mm -hmm. They don't want to say the wrong thing. They 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 don't know where to start. And and because sometimes the picture that's painted is if you say say one if you say yeah. one wrong word, you know, it's going down. They want to be like, like I won't make nothing worse. You know what I mean? Like just so I just appreciate that when love is the basis, you can kind of let people stumble into it. Like you're gonna have some folks say like just stuff that you would be like. Oh God, like, you know, you might think in your head like, oh, but they may really not know. And they will never know yeah. if we don't have the conversations. Yeah. We have to create safe spaces for them, for people in general to be able to come to us and yeah. talk to us about these things. But we also have to feel safe enough to say what we feel and yeah. not have to hold it back. Yeah. Like Amber is actually one of my favorite people to talk to about race because I feel like there's such a openness on both sides like I can say what I want to know that I'm not offending her and she can say and ask whatever questions she wants yeah. and know that she's not offending me yeah. yeah and it makes it an easy conversation to have yeah, yeah that's that mutual vulnerability yeah. right yeah. it's like um I'm probably not gonna get this right and I'm, I'm gonna trust you mm -hmm. with my vulnerability mm -hmm. and we're gonna trust each other you know mm -hmm. can I can I say though um you you mentioned something and um I'm at least I'm careful in this regard that it's not always about white people. Uh, as a mm -hmm. indigenous person, mm -hmm. my whole life growing up, every race treated us like we were someone in the magic kingdom. They had never met one. Yeah. yeah. They never knew nothing about our lives. Yeah. They still think we live in teepees when my tribe don't even live in teepees. <laughs> like, it's like, just to be clear. Yeah, yeah, just, so, just so we're clear, not everyone hunts Native. buffalo and lives in yeah. teepees. That's not the way it goes down. But, but tell, every race, tell, you, tell your friends. <laughs> every single race. And it's actually one of, the, one of the most offensive things when people do that to us. Hey, you guys still live in teepees? You guys still hunt buffalo? Yeah, oh, the government, the government gives you gives you money and all this stuff, and 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 it's all just a horrible 
not understanding of what's act- the actual story. But yeah. you know why? Because we're oh hey, um, we're raised with a picture. Of what other cultures are like. Yeah. Like Shane, actually, when our kids were going through different se- periods in school and uh, learning about different things, and, you know, I went down to Party City. I got the little Native American little dress, you know, put the kids in it, posted the picture. I was like, how cute are my kids? Shane texts me, that's not what we wear. <laughs> I was like, picture coming down right now. Right now. Yeah. Like, Three, two, yeah, one. And I'd post certain words and shit. Mm-mm. Yeah. Nope. Take that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. take it right down. Delete it. Because I yeah. honor Shane and I honor his culture. I honor what yeah. he's what he's about. And because he knows we honor them, there's a space there for him to say like, "That's not what you're thinking." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's never, actually, it's never been a point like, "Oh, Brandy's so offensive." Right. Right. Any of that. right. What it is 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 I'm going to do my best to take the opportunity, like you were mentioning, mm-hmm. to teach as yeah. long as someone's willing to learn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right now, if I teach you and then you go out being <laughs> stupid again, <laughs> then, then, then I'm a, I'm a, a, you, you can go on and be great by yourself because I'm not. I can't do mm-hmm. that. I yeah. can't spend my life doing that. Right. Mm-hmm. But I just want to highlight that it's 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 all of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Let me ask and, you a question: Are you a racist? I have been for sure in the past. I am working actively to not. Um, there was a lot of ignorance on my part, even up until this last year, even identifying um, when uh, just specifically like the George Floyd stuff happened this last year. Um, my wife, my friends were like distraught is probably the best word. And I'm, I couldn't understand it. It wasn't just I didn't understand. I couldn't. I tried and I could not. Like I, I was looking at it purely through like, like if it was uh, not a visual story but a written story. Like these, these are the perceived facts, and mm-hmm. I don't agree. That's how I was looking at it. Mm-hmm. I had no empathy. I had no understanding. You mm-hmm. know, uh, you know the scriptures in there that talks about and it speaks on marriages dwell with one another in understanding. But I speak I think it goes beyond that to even relationships mm-hmm. where even friendships. Why am I not understanding you? Mm-hmm. Um and so the answer, I guess the short answer is yes. Actively working to not, but I think it's more lack of exposure because the more I expose myself, because even to the point I would avoid stories in the news like that. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to deal with that. Yeah. And and just Why? in that statement. Why? Because yeah. it's hard. It's hard to process. Because mm-hmm. yeah. if you yeah. if you are forced to face it, if you're forced to look at it, if you're forced to think and talk and do all that stuff with it, you're almost forced to have an opinion on it. Mm. And out of your ignorance or out of your lack of exposure to it, you're probably going to say something real stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and, and y'all, we've been in conversations mm-hmm. late night mm-hmm. where I know if y'all weren't more holy <laughs> y'all have been like this dude is crazy because I, I went off and said something crazy and it's, it's, it's embarrassing but it is what it is it's part of it's part of the process it's part of the um like i said exposure yeah. the more i have the conversation the more i discuss these things mm-hmm. the the better i get as a man yeah. i had i have more understanding yeah, yeah. right um because i come from like i said I didn't meet one till high school. Yeah. Okay. And then the ones I did meet were not great people. They were drug dealers <laughs> and stuff. And, you know, and then. Way uh, to reinforce the stereotype. Uh, you know? no, that's <laughs> just what it was. I'm just that's kidding. Just, I'm that's totally just playing. The situation I was were, in. You more, were you in the past more racist against black people or white people? Um, actually, um, probably black people because I, I don't dislike. My dad's white. I'm half white. Okay. It was actually Spaniards because Spaniards did all kinds of crazy stuff to my people. Yeah, my so I was, I was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we talked about this reconciliation right, but, right here. <laughs> no, but, but that's you know for me that's what I was looking at the oppressor yeah. in that regard yeah. mm-hmm. and like you know f them and, and that it just being honest that's that's where that was. <laughs> Yeah, you know, to be honest. Go yeah, ahead. that's it. <laughs> yes. no, but, you know, freedom yeah. in Jesus. Yeah. But that's but that's where it free was. them. That's what was, he meant. Free them yeah. was <laughs> was an an attack Forgive against the oppressors. Too. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. and so I get it. 
mm-hmm. right? And I was there, and I'm still there, and it's nothing's done by any means, or yeah. solved, yeah. or fixed, or. But you're in process, yeah. yeah, and you're moving forward, and and perfectly, my friends know, like, okay, I, I these are my thoughts. This is the filter that I currently have. Yeah. Okay, it's under construction, but this is what it is right now. But perfectly, they know at the end of the day. Literally, if you called me at two in the morning, I would be there. To Without a doubt, and to yeah. love you, and, Without a doubt, mm-hmm. and his yeah. racist self would be right there. And I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, that's no. Wow. Tr- truthfully, right? Yeah. There's, there's gotta. No, you know, I appreciate. I appreciate like yeah. the just the open heart, it, yeah. because it's that's the that's the posture that if more of us took, we the better position we would be in. Hey guys, I know we had to pause the conversation right here because we can't fit it all in. It got so good, it just kept going and going and we actually are going to premiere it on our YouTube channel. Um, So we want you to join us over there and we'll get all the information to you so that you can see the full conversation. I think it's really gonna inspire you. It's really gonna enlighten um, you and possibly some friends, all right? So we're going to head over to Power Rooms now And we're going to have a time of prayer and ministry with you. And we look forward to connecting over there with you as well. I hope that this experience today was meaningful to you and that you saw Jesus in it. That you saw Jesus caring for the Samaritans that didn't look like him. That you saw Jesus caring for the widows and the orphans. That you saw Jesus himself who was from a ghetto part of town and rose to be the savior of the world because of who God said he was. So I pray you're inspired. We love you. We'll see you in Power Rooms. Peace.